The title of this fall series is Direct from the National Stage. And if, um, if you recall this summer, there was a lot of, somebody's unhappy so far. That's my kid, <laughs> that's my baby. She sees me at my dance oh, program. she wants to come on stage. Um, this summer, um, I, I got hooked on the news for the various obvious reasons. And um, so it was in late June, early July, I was watching one of the cable news channels and there was all these people talking about what was going on in the world of politics then. And you know, there's always those scenes of Washington DC in the background. There's either the Capitol or the Washington Monument or the Lincoln Memorial. And I'd always just assumed that that was just background in the, in the studio, those were just pictures. And then one day I'm watching and you know, I'm pretty miserable about what I'm seeing on television, except all of a sudden, I see behind a talking head that there's a circus tent on the National Mall. And I thought, no, that isn't just a, a bad, that's actually happening. That's, that's Circus Arts Conservatory circus tent. And of course, it was during the time of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival, where uh, for their 50th um, festival, they had opted to honor um, and celebrate the tradition of circus in America. And so when we say direct from the national stage, uh, this fall for Collecting Recollections, we're gonna talk to some of the people who are actually at the Folklife Festival in Washington, D.C. to share um, their, uh, their memories and their experiences. But today, to start it off, most fittingly, we have the guy that actually put that tent up on the National Mall. So I would like you to join me in welcoming um, the tent master for Circus uh, Sarasota's, or Sarasota's own Circus Arts Conservatory, Luis Garcia. Um, Luis, I don't know whether Pedro's here today. No? Um, in doing some research to find out more about you, so I'd have some questions to ask, um, in a newspaper article a few years ago, this is how your friend and colleague, Pedro Reis, described you. He said, he's an Irishman with a Spanish surname who doesn't speak Spanish, but looks Spanish and goes by an Italian nickname. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about Washington DC in a minute, but first I think we need to unpack some of, so, that, um, some of that description and I think we need to start with, you are an Irishman. I am from Dublin, Ireland, yes. I'm from the Fawcett family in Ireland. My mother's a Fawcett. Uh, my uh, great-great-granddad was over here in America with Buffalo Bill, as far as I heard yesterday about. And my great-grandmother was from um, San Francisco. They went back to uh, England, and my great-grandfather went to Ireland and opened a show there during the First World War. And that's how Fossils came about in, in Ireland, because the Fossils was years in England at that time. And how the Garcia came in is my father was a juggler, famous juggler in Europe. So they had these contracts to go all over the world. And they, they were very famous. And they had a contract to go on, but the money was bad. And the weather was bad. Oh, we're not going to go there. But they heard the fishing was good. So they went to Ireland with the circus there, and that's how I met my mother. And, that's and your father was Spanish? Spanish, yeah. He was from Madrid, Spain. And my middle name is Celebral. We use Garcia because Garcia was easier to use in Ireland because Celebral, they couldn't understand in Ireland that name. So we use Garcia more than anything else. So it's Luis Celebral Garcia. I'm always, I mean, the circus world, the circus families tend to have these backgrounds. I mean, first they've traveled all over the globe, but I mean, did your mother speak Spanish? No. Did your father? She did a bit. My father's Spanish because yeah, he was from Madrid. But did he speak English? Yes, he's okay. very broken English. And we did start to speak Spanish as kids as we grew up. But then we went to South Africa, and that kind of went out. And we started speaking Swansea, Salus, South African, and all those things. And then we came back to Ireland, and we forgot about the Spanish. Then we back to Fossets. So you're born into this. Uh, your great grandfather started the Fossets yeah. Circus, and by accounts, it is in Ireland and England, as big a name yes. in the world of circus oh, yes. as oh, is Ringling. Yes, yes. Big show. Um, was your mother a performer? No, she did more of the business sides. My aunties did, my uncles did. There was a ringmaster, horseback riding, my two aunties. My mother was doing the uh, business all the, um, she um, assist, 
in the okay. ring sometimes. But she did all the business side of the stuff. In the I did some research on the Fawcett family, and um, there was about two paragraphs of some of the accidents and tragedies that that family faced. And I, uh, that's something that I, I still have a hard time reconciling, how people can keep, keep in the business um, with that. So your mother, uh, your father is a juggler, Spanish juggler, Spanish. comes to Ireland because the fishing's good. <laughs> Fish is good. <laughs> Gets a job. Um, on faucets. And, uh, and marries one of the, one of the owners, yeah. or one of the, yeah. into and the family. And his brother, funny enough, came over the same time and married my, my mother's sister. So we have two brothers and two sisters got married in Ireland on faucets. In one, of the, uh, in one of the articles I found, there was a faucet family tree Yes. I couldn't find you on it because it, it, was already, it, yeah. it was more complicated than a banyan grove. Yes. Oh, and it just <laughs> spread every which way. But you must have cousins. All over the world again, everywhere. In, in, in circus. In circus, yes, all over there, everywhere. What's your, do you have a first memory of being at the circus? Um, yes, uh, kids running around with the tent and the tent trailers and playing with all that stuff. I mean, I did perform when I was five, six years old at that time, but trying to, try and remember, it's uh, very hard just playing around as kids with the equipment and things like that. I always ask that question that I think if somebody asked me what my first experience was of being on a farm, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Being on a farm, I guess. I don't know. I guess it's, it's your childhood. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it's your childhood. It, it, yeah. It's not like one day you realized that what you were doing was something different than what most yeah. children, because the children you knew. Yeah, and we're growing up, and so it's one day stands every day. So you don't remember what the next town. I was just explaining them earlier, and they say how beautiful Ireland is. I don't know how beautiful Ireland is, because I don't, never remember. Now if I go back, then I see how beautiful Ireland is. But as a kid growing up, you're one day in and one day out, you didn't know what was the last town's name or what it was going on. And, and you, you were performing at the age of five? Yeah. Doing? A roller bowler. Rollable. And then High Wire with my brother. And I was in a few movies as well in Ireland. We'd done a few movies, um, Lock Up Your Daughters, Where's Jack? I was doing stunts and horses, which I'm not a stunt. I was seven years old at that time, I think seven or eight. Did you ever rebel? Did you ever, like, I don't want to do? Um, you kind of grown into it. I don't like to say forcing, because my father was Spanish and he was a hard person. But we're kind of grown into all this and grown into everything. It was like I was an electrician at 12 years old. I drive the semis when I was 14. I put up the tent, I was tent master in the middle at 12 years old as well. So you, you learn to grow into things. And right? how many siblings? Uh, there's only three in our family. Three. There's six in my, six, seven in the other family, which we were cl very close. And three. everybody went into the circus? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we're all into it, yeah. Um, and still. Any scary I mean I, I, I lots of <laughs> lots? no but I mean what is it, what was your first big triumph when you really you know as a child you thought I'm I'm good at this I'm going to do this funny I don't you know that came a long time later maybe 18 years old when I left the circus I thought oh, this is it. I've had enough now it's just too much work every day you don't have any days off at five o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock at night there's mud everywhere and dirt. And I left it and went down the building site, took the worst job I could find. So I would hate it and go back to the circus, which I was doing very well. You know, I had to work five days a week. Money was better than what the circus was. And then I realized I'm giving a lot up what I know how to do in the ring, performing. And I enjoyed performing. So I finished it all up again and went back to the circus and sat with this roller skate neck with my brother and sister. And we started touring, touring in England. And that's why I was in England quite a long time then. So did you perform with the Fawcett Circus for yes. the most part? Yes, the most of them. And is it still in operation? Oh, yes, yes, it's so still it's well still done. They're just going to do, finish the season now, yesterday, day before, and they got a Christmas show going on now again. But the other family is took on that side. My mother's brother's kids, they've took over that side. Like my generation, right. cousins, they've took on over and done the show. So we don't get involved. I'm, I want to come to America. I'm in America now, so. Come to America. Um, do you remember the first time you saw your parents or your father perform? Uh, yes, doing the juggling, yes. And you, were you, the, the first thing you did was roll a bullet. Did you juggle? Yes, on the, yes, I did. And did he ever see you juggle professionally or? Uh, yes, he did. No, he was in my back assisting me. It's funny, you always have a nice girl behind assisting. My father was assisting back there. <laughs> <laughs> and throwing the things that, 
Yeah, no, he's assisted me because he was doing the juggling before, and then we used to juggle together. And then when he finished, I took over the juggling, which I liked, but it's hard work. All the acts I've done, I've done the wheel dead to death, I've done roller skating act, the loga. The juggling was the hardest out of all because it's a lot of practice. A lot of you practice around the back maybe eight times your act, and you go in the ring, you throw a club up to catch it, and you miss it, and they. Here we start all over. You know? I know nothing about juggling, but and watching jugglers, I, it always seems like once it goes wrong in an act, <laughs> yes. it never gets, it, it yeah. never comes it, back. Yeah. And yeah. you know the the summer circus that we'll do here, we've had some phenomenal jugglers, yes. and when it's on, it's it's just perfection, and yeah. then you can go in the next day, and. It's just like once it goes, it's just like you might as well turn the lights <laughs> off and, and go off because it just never. Yeah, it is. Like and if you're rhythm. nervous, and I'm very nervous when I'm juggling, and my father was very nervous. And that's what I've learned from him. He was very nervous. Very, and he was such a good juggler. And we were in South Africa, which we're in the middle of nowhere, really, in Africa. And he used to get so nervous and uptight. We're not with famous people around here. So he had charisma. He must admit he had very charisma when he dropped in. And I had the same thing as well. But he just got, was so nervous and uptight because he wasn't working right. And that's the same yeah. with me with the juggling. It's very hard to work when there's um, a director in or other artists. I like to work when people are around you know, that I'm not involved with. And I, I feel I want to work for them now. But when there's somebody else in, it's, it's hard. And if you've got a bit of nerves, it's a hard act. Very hard. So your claim to fame act, right, would be the roller skating act. Yeah, that I came to America with. Ex so explain that act to everybody. What, what was... So uh, we go back to my brother and sister and I, we done it between us three. And we done very well. We came actually over to America uh, to do Circus of the Stars with Mary Hart in uh, 1986. And we're doing very well. We were supposed to maybe go to the MGM. We had Circus Circus to book. Then we went back to England and my sister got married. So we, quitted, we had to quit that act. And I said, what are we going to do next to my brother? We can't get another girl because that might happen the same thing. So we started with the Wheel Act. We'd done with the Wheel Act, and then we were, uh, You mean the, the like the, the Wheel of Death, the big... Yeah, what Bella does, yep. uh, everybody yep. else. So my brother and I, let's start something different that nobody else does. Let's make it different and more nice costumes, sexier at that time. We're going back to the 80s. So we do this, and we're doing very well. So we go to Jerry Cottle Circus in London. We open there for Christmas. And straight away, the biggest place I wanted to work was Blackpool. It's called Blackpool Tower Circus. It's over 100 years old where the water comes in, out of the ground. My father worked there many years ago, all my family, and it's a very famous place. We always wanted to work there, so we got in. And then the next job was to go to Kenny, a very famous circus in Switzerland. Again, you're on the high, things are gone. But something happened, missed out there. We didn't do it. Something, we, something happened anyway. We didn't do that. We went back to Alton Towers, a big theme park on the ice show with the stars on the ice circus. And that was dangerous because you're over the ice now, and something happens, you're really... That hurts. Trouble, that we really try. So we went, and then after my brother decided to get married as well. So that split up the act. I said, now what am I going to do? I'm not really involved with the juggling, but in the meantime, I did my juggling act and I was doing electrician on shows and things like that. And then I got a, a job in a park and they said, we want to keep you in this place because they really like you in this park. I said, but the only thing I'll stay here if I can start doing my roller skate now. I want to practice to do my act to go to America. And I've been phoning America trying to get Ringling to come over. And no, 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 we're not, you know. I said, well, le leave that alone. Forget about America. Forget it. I'll start working in Europe. And I started um, in Norway. The opening day in Norway, I started with my high roller skating act. Ringling phoned me up to come and do the job. Okay, you've got you to explain to us the high roller skating act. Yeah, um, I don't know if you've seen, have you seen America's Got Talent this year? Uh, yeah, this year. There's my nephews around there doing a roller skating. You've seen that. But I done it up uh, 15 feet, 15, 20 feet. And it was a guy in the 50s called Bob Top who region, who'd done it. And I thought I was original, but I wasn't. Somebody else said that. And he when you said, hard. you know, you were going to, when you say we had to find something no one else had ever done, in the world of circus, that's pretty tough. Yeah, I mean, yeah. somebody's tried almost everything. Everybody's, but you have to go back again and look at what's going around. And why I done this high skate now? Because I didn't want another partner. I just want one partner and a gimmick. So what can I do so somebody to bite and every, nobody else has done? So you're on a platform, 15 feet, how big? Uh, six foot. Six, six foot, a, a, a circle. Circle, yeah. So six feet, and you're on roller skates, 15 feet high. Yeah. Okay. And you do tr uh, tricks like you've seen on the TV there. You hand by your neck to neck, do spins, hang with one leg, swinging around. And it's all dangerous. It's dangerous enough on the floor, but when you go <laughs> higher, it's another, it's another danger. Even the high wire act, when I was on Ringling, he came to me and he already fell down and he was paralyzed in a wheelchair. He said, you know, you're 
ethical man up there doing that. He said, at least when we fall, we look here, we grab the wire. When you come off, you go, I said, it's like a bottle top. You spin around and somebody kicks your foot, you're gone off. You save the person, but you go. But touch wood, I haven't been off or any been off. Did you, have you never fallen off? No, no. a lot of near misses. But yeah. I, um, I practiced that really. I could walk better on the skates, run around on skates better than my own feet. This is, this is a stupid question. How did you get up there? I had a ladder. You had a ladder and you climbed the ladder house. in roller skates? In roller skates. Skate. I made a special ladder with pads on it that you had to make sure you put it in between here and climb the ladder like that, yeah. And then how long? Like six, seven, eight minutes? Uh, 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 Ringland was only three and a half minutes, but usually uh, six, seven minutes, yes. I could have a lot of things because Ringland only wanted so much of it. I have to back up a bit. Did your sister and your brother marry outside the faith, so to speak? Did they not marry no, circus people? No, no, they married circus people. They did? Yeah. yeah. My, my brother married his long heart, sweethearts. Uh -huh. Many years ago, they used to go out together, and my a, a sister married a, a director, Hoffman Circus in England, which were Irish, Mac. They were Mac. They uh -huh. weren't called Hoffman, so they were German, but they weren't. He was Irish, actually. So you did your act in Norway, and now Ringling wants you. Yeah. So now you're coming to America. Yeah. But before that as well, I had all the contracts to go to um, Krona, Circus Krona, uh, um, um, That's Holland, Germany, right? Circus, very beautiful show as well, another great show. All these great shows I had lined up. In the end, I had to cancel all the contracts to go to America, to come to America. So what was your, what was your first year on the Ringling Show? It was uh, 97, 98 and 98 and tour. It was called the Zusia Tour, Queen of the Isle. It was a big, big, big hippo at the time. Hippo? The big hippo. That was the star of the show, the hippo, hippopotamus. So yeah. Hippo, yeah. That was a bit of monkey <laughs> <laughs> on the back of it. <laughs> so... You had been to this country prior to that yes, time, yes. right? Yes, uh, yes. I came over here, y again, years ago, we talked about Circus of the Stars, and I always wanted to come over after that. Then I worked in Fort Lauderdale. There's a place called the Swap Shop, and there's a big flea market, the world's biggest flea market, Hannaford Circus ran that then. Yeah. So I came over doing the juggling act, and also trained somebody else to do the roller skating act, that time in between. So I was going back and forth. That was finished, the contract, so there was nothing else going. So I went back to Europe again, back to... And then I started the high skate night yeah. with another girl over there again. So I've been in and out of <laughs> to get here. <laughs> so you were with the Ringling Show what? Uh, two years. Two, two years. years. And um, you told me earlier, but um, you eventually came to Sarasota and, and hooked up with Pedro and Dolly. But there had been a, a previous with your family, a, a brush. It's a great story. Yeah, um, no. Um, with Pedro Reis, uh, it's a sad story. My cousin, after we were in South Africa, my cousins went out to work in South Africa, and one of my cousins had a serious bad accident in a truck at that time. And Lucky P uh, Pedro Reis was there at the time, and Basil Wilkie Circus was called at that time. And but he you helped didn't know out. him then. And I didn't know him. I didn't know who he was. My uncle went to fly out to make sure they were all right. But Pedro Reis helped the family, helped them keep doing their acts. They were doing three acts in the ring at the time: perch act. Russian Swing Act and I think a uh, Low Wire Act. And Pedro helped them all, because Pedro knew a lot of how to do a lot of these acts and helped them, the family. So when I came over to America, met Pedro, and his big ambition, oh, I want to build a circus, I want to make a circus. Said, oh, you're mad, you know? You're like, I said, my big thing, I want to do a high roller skating act, come to America. So we always go back and forth in his dreams. And it's funny how our dreams come true at that time. Yeah. So in the meantime, yeah, Pedro and I always kept talking, even though I came to Ringland. And I was on Ringland working there. He kept talking about, we're going to do the show, we're going to try and do this. So the night I finished with Ringland, that day, I got in my car, packed up everything, and drove all the way from St. Louis overnight, came to Sarasota and started building up the tent the next day for him. And what year was that? And that was 99. I think it was 99. 99. End, of ni end of 99. And that was the beginning of Circus Sarasota? Circus Sarasota, yeah. He had a show before here, but not in the tent. That right. was the first show we done Christmas show and we died of death we died of really business was bad it wasn't good even Pedro went on top of the king pole it's for the Christmas ho 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 you know it was really, <laughs> and we all worked I didn't ever get any money didn't get paid at all which we do I said make sure you pay everybody else don't worry about me you know make sure everybody better. and it was hard and we stayed at three months on where Sam's Club is on um Catalan okay that was our first site there it was a bad really bad lots of bad memories there. And then funny enough, that year passed, and then we went to, we had a tent rental, what saved us. We went to DC for Six Flags. Uh, we put a tent rental there, and then we came back to, uh, which was very good again, to Van Wezel. We put the tent right in the car park. 
They got rid of the islands, yeah. and we put the tent up there. So the Van Wales used it because they were renovating re their yeah, the they theater. Were, they were changing the theater. And they, so they put a lot of stuff in the tent. So that got us so up So you and going. performed with Circus Sarasota. I, I, only, and, yes, I did the juggling act. I did once the juggling act there when it was stuck and stuff like that. I did, did When's it. the last time you performed in a circus? Uh, <laughs> this is my nearest performer now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, um, the last, it's, uh, in and out of doing the juggling act, I think, but that's got to be now, uh, I'm going to say How did you years. decide that you just, it was time? It's just the road, how the road went. I was busy with the tent master, and then tent master got me more jobs, more here, going here, going to other people's jo jo uh, jobs. So I kind of left it, and like I said, the juggling, to keep up with it. You've got to keep up with it. And then I used to do a lot of mix and mingles around here, jobs, which was great. It was like practice going there. It, it just, it just again, to keep up that standard that yeah. you have to be is there. Then I went back to Europe, funny enough. Then I've got my green card, so I thought, I can go to Europe for six months and come back here for six months, go there, work, and then I was going to start the roller skating act again, and then it, it was like, oh, it's starting all over again. It's too hard work again. It's just <laughs> getting dangerous and then. So I, and I had a job with Cirque du Soleil to do the tent as well, but I didn't do that. I stayed on back here with Cirque du Sarasota and other projects as well. So this, only the last two, three years, I've been full ploy with Circus Sarasota. Before that, I used to freelance. Jump I around. went back to England. I've been to Japan a few times. Anywhere there's a tent going up, I was there. So it was great in that way. You know, tent master is not one of those jobs that's usually presented, you know, when you talk to your high school guidance counselor. You know, <laughs> so, you know I'd be a doctor, a lawyer, or a tent master. <laughs> what is a tent so, master? Yeah, what is it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What is a tent master? And funny enough, you know, years ago, it wasn't really a tent master. I mean, you all got stuck in the job, and you took part of that. So there was a tent master overlooking, but not as much as it soon got serious. I think when Cirque du Soleil came out and a lot of more, then it was more a tent master was more of a serious because before it wasn't, it was a big thing, but it wasn't a big thing. That act was bigger yeah. than a tent mask. Ten ma but now it changed funny around. There's like the agent said to me, one, he said, there's nobody like you. Well, I can get lots of acts if you want lots of acts. But you, this is for Big Apple many years ago for me to go there. But there's nobody like you, what you can do. Put the tent up and put the seats up and look after everything else as well. I can find lots of that because that's where I try to push my roller skating act again to get back into Big Apple. He said, yeah, you better just keep to the tent. Maybe if you put up a tent <laughs> while on roller skates. Yeah. <laughs> and I tried to do that with Cedric Walker, who you're going to have here next, <laughs> next week. He yeah. wanted me to go. And he said, he said Pay, uh, sign your own check. And go. I said, well, really, I want to do my roller skating act. I'll get an African-American, and maybe do salt and pepper. You know, we go <laughs> just to do my roller skating act again. <laughs> and do the tent master, which is hard work. You know? So we have to talk about what it means to actually put up this tent in particular. Um, just, I mean, I was, I was amazed when I first heard about it. I mean, I'm assuming all of you here, or most of you have been to Circus Sarasota, and the tent, which is now three, four, five years old? Oh, no, it's 10, 10, 10 12, years old 10, now? 12 years old. How many trucks does that travel in? Uh, that, uh, the tent is in two trucks, and the seats are in four the bleachers. And then we'll have another semi with all the backdrops and all the fiddly stuff, which I never take. I take the tent uh, a lot of times on a festival called Bonnaroo, a big, big festival of 90,000 people, and it's used as a comedy tent. So that gets all changed around for something else compared to what Circus Sarasota does. So everywhere I go is a different... So challenge. you're talking of four or five semi-trucks? Yes. To, to move this? To move this, yeah. The six altogether what I take. The seven, like when we went to Washington, D.C., we had seven semis. So when, it, when, it, when someone calls and says, we want the tent... Yeah. That's your job then to get that tent there. Yes. You obviously don't drive all the trucks. I mean, no, no. You, we get a, we get somebody else to come in and do. It. It's not worth for us to have a semi truck and sits there. It doesn't work enough. So we hire a company to take all the equipment up there. So I'll fly in or drive up. So let's say it's going to uh, Wichita. I mean, what kind of what kind of skills? How do you know there's going to be people there when you get there? Because you aren't doing this by yourself, no, obviously. No, no. Yeah. I mean, so sometimes I'll take somebody who knows a bit about it with me, uh, that if they're available. Um, we just get a hand. I mean, uh, like I do everything. I'll drive the forklift. I do the electrics. Everything needs to be done. Only they got a manpower lift, and, and still I got a lift as well. Uh, so how often is the how often is the tent gone from Sarasota? Um, it goes like this year we were in Springfield. We done the biggie. Biggie up there, which was a very... Springfield, very Mass. Uh, yeah. Massachusetts. And then we've done um, Washington, D.C. 
Then we did this big festival, Bonnaroo. So it's, it, uh, this year's been a few months out, compared to usual. And do you stay with the tent? Yeah, majority, a lot of time I stay with the tent, yes. So you spend a lot of time yeah. on the road with the tent. Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> oh, no, I like it. I have my trailer at the back there. Fine, have a barbecue. And, no, I like it. Yeah? And I enjoy it. I enjoy it. It's hard. I, I'm going to say it's hard work. It's stress. I lose a lot of sleep over. Make sure this is done. Make sure that's right. Because I, I'm putting the whole tent. Everybody's working and in, sitting inside. So it's me. Make sure everything else is all right. Okay, you see a performer. Oh, that, that's a dangerous act. Yeah, yeah. But I make, have to make sure that's all. It's also dangerous sitting inside of a tent. The tent, sitting yeah. and the performer as well. So right. I have to make sure everything is all right. Everything. And I know if anybody shows me a nut or a bow, anything, I know where that came from. If anything was ever, I said, no, that's not mine. I know where every, any little thing, you pick me anything, and I know where it is. I think it would be kind of scary to get it all up and then find. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good. I'm glad to know you know where it goes. But you've got to do check everything. Yeah. Everything goes up. You've got to check the rig in. Every, every thing that you go through, make sure it's all right before that I'd start putting anything up or doing anything. You know? Well, we're going to jump to uh, the Folklife Festival and your experience yes. in Washington early in the conversations with, um, with the Smithsonian and with Circus Arts and with the Ringling, I was involved in those conversations. And not this year, obviously, but the year before, um, some of us went to Washington, D.C. to talk about where the festival was going to take place. And the National Mall, better known as America's Front Yard, may be some of the most protected grass in the <laughs> <Yes>. country. <laughs> and. Yes. Um, I couldn't listen to the conversations anymore. Pedro and, and Debbie Walk were hanging in there uh, talking because every time we would find a place on the, on the mall that, no, it can't go there. Yeah. No, it, it has to go there. No, it's too big for that. No, it has to be 20 feet this way. So now you've got this enormous tent on seven trucks going to Washington, D.C. And... There was only, I mean, you can see on the picture here, it was in front of the National Gallery, I think, right? Yeah, there was, uh, yeah. I believe. So what were the unique challenges of getting a circus tent on America's front lawn? Well, again, it's big challenges. Nobody can believe you could put it there. And a lot of people were against it in one way. Yes, they wanted it. And it, it's, again, safety more than anything else about putting it up there, where to put it and how to do it and all that. And you're right about the footprint. You weren't allowed anything on the grass. Nothing, we couldn't put nothing on the grass. They allowed us to put the stakes on the side that we could put some stakes in. Majority of it was all concrete blocks, five ton blocks. We had 80 of them right around the tent. 80? 80 blocks. 79. 80 five ton blocks? Eight, five ton blocks all around the tent. And they had to be exactly engineered in a place that they, they're there and make sure it's all set. And, and I flew up to make sure they didn't want me up there. Because they said, no, we got the circus plan. We can do this ourselves. I said, no, I, Pedro, I'm going up. I don't care. I got to go. No, no, they, they got it. I said, no, I'll go. Because they don't know where the exits are. I got to build a tent from the inside out now. I can't drive around anywhere. You couldn't drive. There's, you're not allowed on the lawn. You couldn't get around the back street. So I had to make sure one road that I get in, I can get out of the concrete block. So that was my trying to put everything in my head to get backwards. This has got to get done first. This has got to get, make sure this is done. When this trailer go, goes here, it won't get out. I've got to make sure that I can get out of there so there's nothing around. So that, that, there, there's what I'm challenge. just back to 85 ton blocks. Yeah. I mean, who, <laughs> I mean, you just, you, it's not like they deliver those. Yeah, we well, did. They, they, they delivered on semis. You only can put so many in a semi because you only have 80,000 pounds. Yeah, but you had to know where they were going to go. Oh, so yeah, yeah. And then we draw like, the plan out to exactly where to it's go. It's not like you say, Could we, can that one go five <laughs> feet that direction? And you can't move them because all of a sudden now everything is moved around. Everything is built. You can't get in there because you're not allowed to drive on the ground. So you're not allowed to do that. So they've got to be, make sure they're in their places. And that, again, that was the task of doing all those concrete blocks. So but I'm used, to, I'm used to doing that. I've, I've, I'm not an engineer. And engineers will come to me and say, my God, what a job, what a job. How did you? No, I said, but I know by looking at it. I, I, I'm so, year, so many years experience doing it, and we've had to put tents. I was in Japan putting a tent up, and they said, no way you can put a tent. I said, I'll put it up. Don't worry. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll do that. And we, I always, you always figure out a way. There's a will. There's a way. And that's my thing. There's a will. There's a way to do it. And there is always a way out of it, you know? Um, so the tent was up. How, the, the festival was two weeks, right? Yeah, 10, ten days. And ten days. every... Every day, every night, the tent filled with? Full, full. And we had four different shows, four different programs going on that tent. We had two wheel acts. 
we had a um, sailor circus in, in there, our own show, uh, Sarasota Circus, um, Surgery Walkers, Universal Soul Circus, and the other one was um, another kid's show. Was a, but we had four different shows in that tent every day. Was it air-conditioned? Yes. Good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it was good because it was, it was hot there, and yeah. it was very hot. It was, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a challenge. I mean, putting those poles up, making sure, because they didn't want us to put any stakes in the ground, but they allowed us right in the center to put the pole, for the king poles to put stakes in there, so that was good. And it was hard. It's, it was hard. It took us a long time. We were two hours or more behind with everything because the stakes were so hard to pound in. It was so hard underneath. And underneath where the tent was, there was a bunker underneath there. So what were they were doing? They were, they were recycling all the water. They dug up the whole park. Every time we went there during the summertime, you couldn't get on the park anyway. They dug it all up because it made a irrigation. They were going to save the water and recycle it. So under the tent, underneath the tent, you had to get underneath. There was a grid to go underneath that they could go to the pump. So we had to make sure that was okay, that they could go in and out of there anytime, anytime when the show was on, whatever, they had to get. So that was a hard plan. And how to put that, and where do you put the seats now? Because now it's all grids around, you know? Again, challenges. I love my challenges. You love the challenge <laughs> of it. Um, so it, it, there was a, were the shows afternoon and night, four different it, circuses? Yes, yeah, for 12, uh, 12, 1, 4, and 7. And that wasn't the only thing that was going on on yeah. the mall, oh, right? No, there, yes. was, there was. We had the uh, Wellenders doing um, Tina Wellenda out there. We had a lot of different shows and programs going on outside. So it was a full activity. Full. Any surprising response from the audience? I mean, you know, I mean, circus gets a bad rap sometimes. You know, if somebody wants to, you know, and they, they'll frequently refer to, you know, this is like a three ring circus, yeah, you know? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, I, and mean, I made that on the mall. I made that point. And yeah, somebody I, said, What do you hate about circus? What do you, what's the. I can't remember how it went. It's something about the circus, the circus name. I said, I, I, when I first came to D.C. and we started talking about this, I said, you know, I'm so proud of you to talk about it because I kept thinking circus gone away. That name circus, okay, circus, other names you can use, but circus is going to go. I said, I'm so proud of you. I'm part of that four generations. Oh, my fifth generation is in here today, actually, <laughs> the two babies. I'm so proud of you saying that. So it was great. And on the mall, when, when this person, you know what I said I hate about people saying about circus? It's, it's run like a circus in the government, in the this, or any. They don't know how we run a circus. We've done four shows a day in that tent, and safety-wise, people's lives are in risk. Yeah. And I hate when they say, oh, it's run like a circus, as everything is like a circus, like a tree-ring circus. But they don't know about it. They should come and work with us and show how we work. We should only we hope the government ran as well <laughs> as the circus. <laughs> well, I don't want to go say the government, because I, I thought I'd get in trouble in D.C. to say that. But in the end, I just don't like it. And it really cheapens our name yeah. of circus. And it's, it's sad. It's, that's what I was very upset about that. But, but again, it's grown. Circus has grown. Even though Ringland is finished, we don't hear that that's out. We're stronger than ever. There's more schools. That we've, when I came to America, there's only two teaching schools around. Now there's hundreds. So circus has come up. In Vegas, there's another circus coming out again. Circus, old-fashioned. Everybody's going to the old theme now. So yeah. it's going. It's, it's going. Yeah. So come and see us, Circus Sarasota again. I yeah, mean, it's, um, well, we were discussing our mutual fascination with America's Got Talent, which I don't miss. Cause, um, but I would say a good quarter to third of the acts there yes. um, are circus and frequently from Sarasota. They yeah, yeah, lot, yeah. Well, well, we have everybody here. Everybody, <laughs> everybody <still> lives here <laughs> so, in the circus world. Yeah. So we've discussed you being um, an Irishman with a Spanish surname and um, who doesn't speak Spanish, mm. um, but goes by an Italian nickname. Again, I don't know how that started. I think when I started joining with Pedro, when I finished the Ringling show, and I came down with Pedro and started with the tent, and then I don't know who started. Oh, it called him Zito. Zito. And I don't Zito? Know, I, Zito. So, and then just went in there, and that was it. And it was from there, and it's always been like that. But the, the bad thing is when people come from Europe to see me in in here in America, oh, we're looking at, where's Louis, Lu Louis or Luzito, where's, oh, we have nobody called that name. So my friends, why well, don't we just seen you? Well, we just came over there to see you, and they said, you don't work here, you're not here. I said, what do you mean? I was there on site that day. And these are people from England, you know. No, no, because Zito. Yeah, we have a Zito, but we have no Louis. <laughs> Louis or Zito. Zito. So you, you said, um, and I, I really wish I had made a point to get up to Washington, because I think um, it had to be a great moment. Any any um, particular memories of the, or anything particularly moving um, when you were in Washington with the, with the program? 
Yeah, I mean, a great, another great step for us in circus to be there and on the mall and things like that and just the arts of it all, you know, it was great. It, it, no, it, the whole thing was, and pr very proud again, you yeah. know, at the end. Of, like I said, it's a, it is a nerve of everything going up and, uh, but when it's up and done, you know, and I climb up on top of there at 65 feet and I stand right on top of the pole is this size, taking a video and you thought, look where I'm at, taking a video. Yeah. Right in the middle of DC, taking a video of all, all, all the stuff all around. And you told me earlier, when thanks were given. Oh, and yes. It, I, I was, uh, when the whole show finished that night, everything was finished and they were going to give a special thanks. They gave me the first thanks of all. And that was really, that was surprise. That was a really big surprise. Cause usually, you know, I'm at the back somewhere or whatever it is, yeah. but it was really, really nice that I had the biggest thanks of, of everybody. And where's the tent headed next? Uh, next is uh, here in Sarasota. It's coming back from Springfield at the moment, and then it'll go up in the mall. It'll January, first week in January, it'll start going up in the mall. For here? Uh, for, for here, for for the, ready for, for the, uh, Circus for the Sarasota. Show. So we've got um, the Windjammers going in there, and something else is going in there. Uh, Karen Bell's got something else going on there. And then we got the, our big gala at the 29th or 28th of January. Then all the bleaches go in, and then we start rehearsing for Circus Sarasota then. Is there anything in the world of circus that you really wanted to do and you didn't? And the circus, I, the only thing I would like when, want to do my skate act again. Yeah. You know, we, we would like to, if it was years ago, you know, and, and do that again and really traveled around. Because I missed a lot of countries. I've been coming to America. I missed a lot of places in Europe. I wanted to go to Switzerland, you know, other countries that I'd never been. And that's what I miss, just to go around uh, France. I worked in France yeah, during Christmas, but do the tour around France. Do a tour around Spain and Portugal. And that's what I miss my boat doing that. Now it's too late, I won't do it now. But well, now you mentioned the next generation. Yes, we'll see. So what do you, what do you envision? A roller skater? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's lots, I'm gonna let them decide. I, I'll, I'll push them. Will there be any no's? Them. Will there be any no you're not doing that? Uh, maybe some things, uh, I will see, well, you know, it's just a hard, it's, it just, it's, it's hard because when I grew up, we had not much education. The education was kind of out and we never had that much. And I've learned to survive on my hands and I didn't have, my father didn't want to hardly read and write because he never read, read and write, but he could speak and read and write five different languages. Sorry. Yeah, he never went to school, but he could still read and write five different languages. So he didn't want, need us to go to school or when we went to Ireland to school, don't teach them Irish, they're not gonna use that anyhow, you know, whatever. So we <laughs> missed a lot of the schooling. So the first thing the kids will have always the education, where we missed out. And years ago, well, we didn't need it that much. Nowadays, you need a good education. Yep. You know, like I said, I had always my hands to work with. I can put my hands on anything, weld, mechanical, electrics, whatever. How many people in the country do what you do? Or as a tent master? There's, there's a few around, but there's not that many who my, genera my generation is going to go. And there's not many who know. I always remember Chipperfield, Dickie Chipperfield in England said, you're, you're the last of this. There's no more because the other generation don't want to work. They want to put their hands on this. They don't want to do this. They don't want to, they want to do specific things. I'm not saying all of them, but they are very, and the generation is going to miss of that person who knows how to do this and how to, to fix this. So what would this. you say to a young person to convince them to be a tent master? Say, come on, learn this. And then someday this will all be yours. <laughs> <laughs> and the stress of what, it. What's the good uh, parts? What's the good part? What, what's the selling I mean, point? If you want to travel and stuff like that, it's a very good job. I mean, again, like everything else, if you're into it and you get a buzz out of it, you know, you're, you're, that's that thing of it, you know. And, and I think young people will, but it's just hard to get them in that, because it is a 24 hour job. Yeah. Tent master is, even though the tent's up and every, oh, you don't have to do nothing now. No, I make sure this is done, that's done. You know, make sure, build things, make things, get things ready. When I tear down, when I start with Circus Sarasota, it's up, I'm already tearing down. My head's in tearing down mode. What I gotta do, what I gotta fix, what I gotta repair to take it down. And yeah. it's funny, people, if we just put it up, I said, no, I'm on tearing down mode now to make sure that everything, when it does tear down, everything is, all right in its place. I think you hit it when you said it's it's the buzz. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's you know together. you've been around this world your entire life, um, and the, I'm a, the the circus you traveled with as a child was a tented yeah. circus. You yeah. saw it go up, you saw it yeah. come down yeah. day after day after day. And you hate it. You hate it, but you love it. <laughs> you hate no, it, you, but you love you it. Just, you know, you, you know. My brother's in Ireland now, and he's moving out, and I miss that moving every day. 
and getting going. And, you know, get, and, but another way, you know, the weather's so bad in Ireland and you're always wet, you're always wet. And, and I, of course, I'd miss it in that way. But then I'd light a fire in the backyard. I only live around here. And I send him a video, uh, having a whiskey and a cigar and having a fire tonight. We're there tearing down in the rain and <laughs> wet yeah. and stuff like that. So I probably would last only a little while and then got to get back to the States again. Got to get back no, to the no, sunshine. But I, and we always, my family, we always talk about how hard times were. But we enjoy those times. As hard as they were, we found a way to enjoy. You know, once we put up the tent, we got organized, had something. We were playing soccer before the shows. One day stand, you know, playing football and things like, you know, it's, you do, you know, you do, you do what you got to do. Can't give up the business. No, no. Is there anything else? Have we missed something? I'm sure we've missed many oh, things. I, but there's lots. Like I said, we could talk. I mean, compare. Best memory of circus? Best memory. I think challenges coming to America. That was my get in the Ringling get, Show was yeah, yeah. yeah. That that was uh, what, what, uh, you know that was my big thing. If I hit that, I like, not it's gonna make big money out. I'm gonna be a big star. But then again, get those goals. Get, get those and, goals. And the lowest moment. The lowest moment. <laughs> There's always that low. <laughs> Even coming here today, I thought, oh, do I have to do this today? You know, I'm not good at this. This is not my thing. And they they get you down. You know. Yeah. But, you know. Well, because there's that, there's that striving for excellence, I think, yeah, yeah. in the world of circus, that yeah. anything just under yeah. that. And that's why I tell other people and kids, that don't give up, you know, whatever. You know, every, everybody says, you can't do that. You can't, who said you can't do that? There's no such thing as can't. Just do it, you know. When I hear the young generation, oh, no, you know, I said, you'd rather be going home doing this, wouldn't you? Come on, do it. Come on, just get, you know. Just get up and do get it. Get up and, you know. Yep. Uh, like, I, I, I have three properties I own. I have a, a small tent company, and I'm full-time with Circus Sarasota. And I've got two kids. I just keep busy. How do they clean the tent? I was going to ask what, this yeah, earlier. Yeah. Well, there's two ways of doing that. <laughs> and then that. what do you do? I mean, where do you hang it up to dry? Yeah. <laughs> Get a hair dryer out. Yeah. No. There's, t there's two ways to do it. You can wash it on the ground. Wash it on the ground. I get a crew of 10 people normally. And so what I do, and we'll do it in Sar Sarasota, we'll start. It's too big to get around the whole thing. So what I do is put in a pie. And the tent is in four pieces anyhow. Really five, but it's in four pieces of a pie. So what I'll do is start washing, get 10 guys with a pressure washer and a brush. You need to have a brush and soap. The pressure washer doesn't clean the tent right. And I'll take a quarter of that up and keep washing it. And wash it and wash it, get up. And as it goes up, it'll dry off. And with the heat here, it'll dry off. So you start from the bottom and but, go up? No, from the top, top and go down. go down. But it's going up the tent. So I'll take it all the way down again. Then I'll go to the next quarter and wash it. Because what happens if you wash the tent right around, and by the time you get around, it um, dries up with the soap and it leaves a stain in the tent. And it's harder to get the stain out of the tent then when it's in there. Yeah. You've got to scrub really hard because it's dry with the sun. So what I do is there's four sections of this tent. So I'm going to lift the tent up. They're going to wash, 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 wash and we're lifting it up every few minutes. Oh, okay. And, we do, and then we can drain all that water off. Oh, so that's what you mean on the ground. It's, on the it's ground. down. It's and down, you and you just slowly put You can wash it on the ground, but to get rid of that soapy water. Because you can't put it away wet. No, I mean, and that's, the, that's one of those hard things. You, we challenge anywhere we go on the weather is to pack it away dry. You know? And in Springfield, we had the same problem now. It looked great, it was good, but it's cooler up there. So I was waiting and waiting to dry. So I thought, no, let's get this section down. We'll just hand it to get it dry because it will come back moldy and smelly. Yeah. And, and this, when the straps are in, it leaves a stain and it's so hard to get out. Uh, but going back to the washing, I wash that tent by myself sometimes. If I do a job and we're somewhere and I get bored, I'll go up there with a broom, a harness and a hose. And it's funny how you have to carry the broom, the hose and everything and the rig in. And it's very hard on your back because you're pushing. You're, you're pushing down on the tent, so you're, you're pulling this way anyhow. But you're also pushing on the tent, so it's very hard on your back. But I'll wash that whole tent by myself sometimes. I'll go up there and do the whole I section think, by section. I think they should put that on America's Got Talent. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole different and the, the hardest thing, and it, you get, it, it's after a while, the slip. When you're washing, the soap's coming down on your feet now. And you slip like that, quick, very far. But after a while, you get used to it and you, you challenge, now I'm not going to slip this time at all. You know, and you get your feet firmly in there, you wash them clean, and, and also rinse it as well. Fabulous. It's hard, it's, it's hard work. But like I said, I did in Japan, I'm bored now, let's do something. You know? yeah. So I'll take a section every day, every morning I'll go up there and wash a piece of tent. And it's amazing how clean it is. And I could wash it better by myself up there than having 10 people on the floor. Because you don't miss anything. Yeah. Because you, you're, you're going bit by bit as That's you go it. along. When you're on the floor and everybody's washing, they're doing this and they're missing spots you know, as it goes up. So later I get up with a rag, 
dampen the steam. I don't think I want to be on the crew helping you do that because <laughs> I have a feeling you go around and you missed the spot. But again, so. it's hard. But again, it's got to be clean. You know, we, do, we wash it every year. We come back to Sarasota. So that tank gets cleaned, the front gets cleaned up and everything. Then it's ready to go out again. The next I'm going to have a new appreciation this year when I get to, no, to no, Circus you will. And, people, and the, the nice thing, we've had people from Sailor Circus, they're adults, come and you know, help at Sailor Circus Rig, but they come in and help me do the tent. Like, come on, come on. They don't realize how much work that was involved and what is involved. So they, again, there's a new appreciation of what's going on, yeah. how much, what does really go on in a lot, you know? Well, listen, this was great. I thank you very much. Thank no, you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.